Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is WireDogSack back with another video for you guys. Today's video, we are in TriHackMe. This is the SOC Level 1 Learning Path. This is the Cyber Defense Frameworks Module. This is the Summit Room. Can you chase a simulated adversary up the Pyramid of Pain until they finally back down? So, we're going to go ahead and check out this room. If you are following along here, we've been making some steady progress through SOC Level 1. Be sure to check out my other videos before you get to this one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, let's take a look here. Objective, after participating in one too many incident response activities, Pico Secure has decided to conduct a threat simulation and detection engineering engagement to bolster its malware detection capabilities. We have been assigned to work with an external penetration tester in an iterative uh, purple team scenario. The tester will be attempting to execute malware samples on a simulated internal user workstation. At the time or same time, you will need to configure Pico Secure's uh, security tools to detect and prevent the malware from executing. Following the Pyramid of Pain's ascending priority of indicators, your objective is to increase the simulated adversary's cost of operations and chase them away for good. Each level of the pyramid allows you to detect and prevent various indicators of attack. Room prerequisites, completing the preceding rooms in the Cyber Defense Frameworks module will be beneficial before venturing into the challenge, specifically the following. So make sure to do the Pyramid of Pain and the MITRE rooms, or just check out my videos on those rooms. Start the machine up, then you're going to click on this link here. If you get an error for back gateway, wait a few minutes and refresh, and it should load up properly. All right, and there's quite a few flags we need to capture here or find. And let's go ahead and pivot over to the site. Okay. Uh, first email here says introduction, penetration test. Hey there, I'm Sphinx. And I will be working with you and conducting a threat simulation and detection engineering tasks. I will attempt to execute malware samples. I want to simulate a com compromised user account to see if Pico Secure Security Tools can detect the attacks. This will be an iterative process, blah, blah, blah. blah. We already read about that. I will start with something simple like sample.xe, scan this file using the malware sandbox tool, and review the generated report. Maybe there's a unique way for you to distinguish this file and add a detection rule to block it. Once you manage to do so, I'll be in touch again. It says you can access various security tools on the left side there using the hamburger icon, which is this here. So let's take a look and let's see here. Let's go to malware sandbox. All right, sample.exe is there. All right, let's go ahead and submit for analysis. Just like, kind of like virus total or any type of automated sandbox solution that you may come across, right? Like hybrid analysis, something like that. Okay, so print out a little uh, fancy report for you with all kinds of uh, details in here. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Behavior analysis, malicious metasploit was detected, suspicious connects to unusual port. Info reads the machine, GUID, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it does all kinds of stuff here, and you have some hashes here, so maybe we can block the hashes, possibly. So, let's see here. I'm just going to copy, and then let's see. Manage hashes. Hash value, there we go. Okay, let's go and block it. And submit hash. Nice work. Prevented sample1.xe from executing, and they sent us a nice little email here. So, let's go back over to the email section here and check our inbox here. You blocked me. Hey, again, good work that detection you added blocked my malware from executing. Since file hashes and digests are unique to every file, they are by far the highest confidence indicators out there. You can be sure it's malware sample the next time you see the hash. However, by design, that is also one of the significant downfalls relying on hashes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it's going to get a lot harder as you progress through these IOCs and, and putting in counter mechanisms as we um, saw earlier. So let's go ahead and grab this flag and plug it in real quick. Then we're going to start on sample number two here. Okay, hit submit. All right, and in fact, all I did this time was recompile the malware and generate a new file hash and execute it without issue. See if you can come up with a new way to detect sample two. So let's go back and I, I guess we just click on this. Awesome. So let's go to sample two, submit it for analysis. German chocolate cake. Interesting. I don't like coconut, so I don't like German chocolate cake. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue. It looks like it has some similar information here. We've got the hash stuff up here. Okay, some other behavior analysis stuff. Now we got network activity. Interesting. HTTP requests. You got connections down here as well. So let's see here. Maybe we could block this URL. 
Okay, let's try that. And let's go to the hamburger icon again. And firewall manager. And okay, we'll just do the IP then. Egress. So we'll put any source and then we'll plug this. Ah, it got cut off. Okay, well, let's go back over to the sandbox again and grab just the IP. And then ports 4444. Okay, so let's flip back over to the firewall manager. Create a rule, egress, which is outbound. So any anything going out to this here, deny, save rule. Okay, check inbox. Okay, so that's done. Let's go to mail. Okay, it says, uh, it seems, you, seems like you stopped me again. You must have found the IP address to which my malware sample connected clever. This method isn't foolproof, though, as it's trivial for a motivated adversary to get around it using a new public IP address. I just sent it for a cloud provider, cloud service provider, and now have access to many more public IPs. Great. Well, you'll see it in the real world as well. This time, you'll need to detect uh, sample 3.xe another way. I have already had my server um, running on a new IP address and have plenty more backups to fill over in case these get blocked. So that can be very, very annoying that third actors will do that to you. But this is good stuff here. So we're going to plug this one in, done there. And let's go ahead and scan it again. Okay, and we should have some additional information, I'm assuming, since number two had a lot more information than one. Okay, so let's take a look here. And more network activity here. Let's go into some domains. Okay. The DNS request, so this one looks funky here. Yeah, it even says backdoor. I mean, dead giveaway, right? So let's go ahead and, and uh, get this blocked here. So I guess DNS filter, we need to do this here. Real name, let's do, um, let's just call it sample two, I guess. Sample two, malware. All right, we'll just leave that like that. Okay, let's do this, deny, save rule. Done. Nice work. DNS filter will prevent sample three from connecting to the C2. Okay, now we got another email from this guy. Okay, there's the next flag here. So let's go ahead and grab this bad boy and plug it in real quick. All right. Now let's try to get this next flag here. It looks like you're able to block my domain this time because every new IP address I get or try gets detected. You're causing me a bit of trouble now. I have to purchase and register some new domain names and modify DNS record. So some attackers might get mildly, mildly annoyed by this and find a new target, but I'm motivated to continue like many. This time, blocking hashes, IPs, or domains won't help you. If you want to detect sample four, consider what artifacts or changes my malware leaves on the victim's host system. Interesting. So I'm wondering if there's going to be like some kind of maybe commands or something like that, maybe some persistent mechanisms. So let's go ahead and... Run this bad boy in the analysis thing here, or the sandbox here. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down. And take a look here. There's the DNS request. Registry activity, okay. Write, write, read. Okay, it says disable real-time monitoring, so that looks odd there. That's definitely an indicator. Trying to disable um, AV tools on your machine, right? So that's pretty much a dead giveaway right there. All right, so let's go ahead and flip to the hamburger icon here. And then I'm assuming we're going to need to use the Sigma rule builder. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new one here. And let's see, sysmon events, register modifications. There we go. All right, to make things easier, I just duplicated the tabs here. So we can just flip back and forth between a couple of these here. That way it doesn't erase my... Um, current settings in here. So let's grab the key. First things first, flip back over here and put the key information here. Register name is going to be this here. And then value is going to be one. Okay. And then attack ID is going to be defense evasion. Yeah, defense evasion. So validate rule. There we go. Validated and deployed on the sim. Awesome. Now let's flip back over to the mailbox, take a look here. Hey, I'm not sure what you managed to do this time, but you seriously threw a wrench into my malware sample. 
I spent ages trying to reconfigure my attack uh, tools and methodology to get around your detection. Super annoying, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I finally have sample five ready for you to detect. Um, different process time in the sample. All of the heavy lifting and instructions occur on my back end server. Uh, so I can easily change the types of protocols I use and the artifacts I leave on the host. You'll have to find something unique or abnormal about the behavior of my tool to detect it. I have attached logs of the outgoing network connections from the last 12 hours on the victim machine. It may help you correlate something. I don't know what to do if you uh, can stop me at this level. Okay, so let's go to grab this flag first. I'll plug it in. And then let's go ahead here and take a look at this attachment. Okay, nice log file. So as you're browsing this log file, of course, take a look at the timestamps, source, destination, port, size, information here. And you see that the destination is changing IP addresses, right? And then also the port seems to change as well between 443 and 80. But we notice something here that seems to be similar. So you have 97 bytes, right? So maybe we can build something off of that information there, right? So let's go ahead and flip back over to our builder here. And let me go back into it because I'm not sure if we needed to refresh the page or not. So create signal rule. And we want to do hey everybody welcome back to my channel be sure to hit the like button comment and subscribe once you subscribe be sure to hit that notification bell all right so you know every time I post a new video as you can see here most people that view my videos view my channel are not subscribed now if you do subscribe it will help me get into the YouTube algorithm so that we can continue to grow our glorious community here as always, thank you all for taking the time to watch. Have a nice day and enjoy the video. All right, so we're going to need to do this network connections, right? Detect outgoing network connections, network traffic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because that's the information that's displayed in this log information, right? So the information we need to pull out of here, of course, is going to be the port information and, of course, size, okay? And let's take a look at the criteria. So I've already plugged in my information here. So remote IP is going to be any because it keeps flip-flopping between different ones you can see there right so that's going to be any same thing with port it flips it flip flops between port 443 and port 80 right and also the attacker could just i mean just switch the ports honestly but 97 bytes looks pre pretty consistent in here so we're going to use that information and of course the frequency is going to be 1800 seconds because this this seems to be happening every 30 seconds as we can see here in the logs timestamps there Okay, and then attack ID is going to be command and control because obviously it's connecting back to a C2 server. So validate this rule. There we go. Your signal rule has been validated and automatically deployed to the stem. And you can go ahead and review this information here because this is what the rules are going to look like if you ever get into like detection engineering type of space, anything like that. You're going to see inf similar information here. Okay, anyway, so let's go ahead and check our mail again. All right. So let's go ahead and grab this flag before anything else, plug it in. And then we're on the last flag here, which is going to be final flag received from Sphinx. Okay, let's take a look here. You have managed to detect sample five. I'm very impressed, but also very annoyed because now I need to go back to the drawing board and create a brand new tool to do what I needed to do. If I can't find another one quickly, this will be another significant investment. Also, I will need to train myself all over again on how to use it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from last trick, I have sample six. This time you will need more than artifacts or tool detection to help you. You'll need to focus on something extremely hard for me to change subconsciously my techniques and procedures. I've attached the recorded command logs from all my previous samples to understand better what actions I tend to perform on my victims to extract information. Once I have remote access, good luck. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. And let's see. So they're, they're doing all kinds of commands here, directory stuff here, net, local, group, administrator, it's all going to the same information here. So obviously we're going to probably use this criteria to build out something. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump back over to our Sigma Rule Builder. Let's go back to home and jump back into the Sigma Rule Builder. Okay, this time... We probably want to do, uh, let's see, system on event logs again. There we go. File creation. Okay. This looks like what we're needing. So let's flip back over here and 
I'm gonna grab this information. Okay, and let's go ahead and plug it in here. File path. I don't know if we need the whole thing in here or just the temp directory, but this is gonna be it here. And then this looks like collection. So we're doing some kind of um, reconnaissance, it looks like, just by the commands listed out here. And let's try that. Yeah, okay. So let's get rid of this. Okay, we get rid of that then. There we go. All right, so we are done with this. Let's flip back over and grab this last flag here. Well, that's it. I officially given up. Throughout the engagement, you managed to chase me to the very top of the pyramid of pain. Uh, you detected my sample file hashes, IP domains, etc., etc. To continue, I have no choice but to completely retrain myself and conduct extensive research to figure out why or how you're catching me. And with that, I don't think you'll ever see me again. Here's the final flag. Awesome. So we managed to beat the Sphinx. And this is good stuff here. This purple team type of activity. Try this out yourself. If you build out your own like home lab environment, you can use a tool out there called like Atomic Red Team. There's probably some others out there as well that you can use. So you can set up like a home lab with like a sim environment, something like that, and then play around with something similar like this if you want to dive deeper into this particular area. This is some good stuff here because you'll come across this on the blue team side of things if you're working in like maybe the SOC or instant response type work, you know. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you are new here. As always, thank you all for taking the time to watch my video. Have a nice day, and I will see you later.